In this lecture, we're going to start talking about graphs. So the next five weeks of this course will all be related to graphs. So for the next two, week, next two weeks, we're going to be talking about data structures that are implemented via graphs, specifically via trees. And then in the three weeks after that, we're going to talk about computational problems to determine properties of graphs, like finding you know, shortest path between two nodes of a graph. So in this first segment, we're just going to define what a graph is and introduce some notations related to graphs. So a graph looks like the following. It consists of vertices, which are the circles here, and edges. So edges just connect a pair of vertices. And if two vertices are connected by an edge, then we call them neighbors. So this vertex here, for example, has two neighbors, this vertex and this vertex. So another fundamental concept in a graph is the notion of a path. So a path is just a sequence of edges which connect vertices. So here we can start at vertex one, we can follow this edge to go to vertex two, from here we can follow this edge to go to vertex three, and then we can follow this edge to go to vertex four. So this is a path connecting vertex one with vertex four. On the other hand, you can see that if we look at vertex one and vertex seven, then there is no path connecting them. Now we say that a graph is connected if and only if, and only if there's a path between every pair of vertices. So this graph here would not be connected because as we just said, there's no path between vertex one and vertex seven. Okay, so related to a path is the notion of a cycle. So a cycle is just a path that starts and ends at the same vertex. Okay, so here we have a path that goes from one to two to three to four and then back to one. So that's a cycle. For the next two weeks, we're going to be talking a lot about graphs that are trees. So let's define what a tree is. A tree is a connected graph that has no cycles. So if we look at our running example here, is this graph a tree? Well, there's actually a couple problems with this graph. The first is that it has a cycle, right? We have this cycle, uh, this path that starts at one, goes to two, to three, to four, and back to one. So it has a cycle. So this graph is not a tree. Okay, so now I've removed the edge between vertex one and four. So now the graph has no cycles. Is it a tree now? Well, it's still not a tree because it's not connected, right? There's no path from, for example, vertex one to vertex seven. So right now the graph is actually the union of two trees, right? So, so this graph on the vertices one through six, that's a tree. And then this graph just between vertex seven and eight um, is also a tree. But overall, the whole thing is not a tree because it's not connected. So now if I remove you know, vertices seven and eight, now we finally have a tree, a connected graph with no cycles. Now trees have a very nice property. If you have a tree on n vertices, it's always going to have exactly n minus one edges. In fact, this condition is sufficient to be a tree. So if you have a connected graph on n vertices that has n minus one edges, then it has to be a tree. So why is that? Well, if you had a connected graph with n minus one edges, why could this graph not be a tree? Well, we already know it's connected. So if it's not a tree, that must mean that it has a cycle, okay? But if it has a cycle, then I can just remove one edge from that cycle and the graph will still be connected. So then we would have a connected graph with just n minus two edges, and that's not possible, okay? If we have n vertices, it's not possible to link all of them up with just n minus two edges. Another nice fact about a tree is that if you take two, any two vertices in the tree, 
there's always a unique path connecting them. And we can see why this is true as well. So let's just say I have a vertex A here and vertex B. And let's say there were two different paths going from A to B. Well, then I could take one of these paths to go from A to B, and then I could take the other path in reverse to go from B to A. And now you see that there's a cycle uh, involving A, right? So this path goes from A to B and then back to A. So it's a cycle. Okay, so in a tree, uh, there has to be a unique path between any two vertices. And this lets us define the distance between two vertices. If I take two vertices, there's a unique path that connects them. And I just look at the number of edges on this path. And that's the distance between these two vertices. Another thing that we like to do with trees is to root them. And I think all the trees that we see in this course will be rooted trees. Okay, so what does that mean? So we can just pick an arbitrary vertex of the tree and make that the root of the tree, okay? So in this particular example, I've made two the root of the tree. Usually we draw the root of the tree at the top of the page, and then all the other vertices come down from the root. And once we have a root, then we can layer the vertices of the tree. So you see I've kind of made all these vertices here, they're kind of at the same uh, horizontal line on the page. And then these two vertices here are also on the same horizontal line on the page. Okay, and so the way that we layer the vertices is in terms of their distance from the root. So you see that vertex one, five, and three, they're all at distance one from the root. And vertices six and four, their distance two from the root, okay? So let's look at another example. I can just start with the exact same tree, but now I'm going to make vertex four the root. Okay, so I draw vertex four at the top of the page. There's one vertex that's at distance one from vertex four, so I draw that next. Then there's again one vertex at distance two from vertex four, that comes next and etc. Now I put the, the vertices at distance 3 from the root, and then there's one vertex at distance 4 from the root. Okay, so in this course, we're, we're always going to represent our trees in this way. We're going to have some vertex at the root, and then we're going to layer the vertices in terms of their distance from the root. Okay, so once we have a tree with a root, then we can talk about the depth of a vertex. The depth of a vertex is just its distance from the root. So it's basically, you know, in which layer the vertex sits in, in this picture. So the root itself just has depth zero. Uh, this vertex is at distance one from the root, so it's at depth one. This vertex is at depth two, and the vertex six here is at depth four. The depth of a tree itself is just the maximum depth of a vertex in the tree. Okay, so the vertex with maximum depth in this tree is vertex six. It's the vertex that's farthest away from the root and it's at depth four. So the depth of this tree here is four. So we think about vertices in a tree as potentially having children and parents. A child of a vertex is a neighbor of the vertex that is below it in this picture. Okay, so more precisely, if you have a vertex at depth D, then its children are its neighbors at depth D plus one. Okay, so in this example, uh, vertex four has one child, that's vertex three. Vertex two has two children, vertices one and five. And vertex six here has no children, okay? And neither does vertex one. Vertex one has no children. Okay, so a vertex with no children, we call a leaf, okay? So we kind of have the, you know, the tree is kind of looking backwards here, right? We have the root at the top and the leaves at the bottom, but this is usually how we, we draw our trees.
so we similarly have the notion of the parent of a vertex. Okay, so the parent of a vertex at depth d is its neighbor at depth d minus one. Okay, so for example, vertex two here, its parent is vertex three. Vertex six here, its parent is vertex five. And vertex four has no parent. Okay, so the root does not have a parent. You see that every vertex in a tree, it has at most one parent. And the only vertex that doesn't have a parent is the root. Okay, every other vertex has a parent. So now we can see that a tree on n vertices will always have exactly n minus one edges. And that's because every vertex except the root can be identified with a unique edge. And that's the edge connecting that vertex to its parent. So that's why a tree is always going to have n minus one edges. Okay, there's one more piece of terminology that's we're going, that we're going to need, and that is the height of a vertex. Okay, so depth kind of measures how far down a vertex is from the top, and height kind of measures how far up a vertex edge from the bottom, from the bottom of the tree. So precisely the height of a vertex is the length of the longest path from the vertex to a leaf. Okay, so if we look at vertex three here, there's actually two paths connecting vertex three to a leaf, right? So we can go from vertex three to vertex one, that's a path of length two, and we can go from vertex three to vertex six, and that is a path of length three, right? because there's three edges on that path. So we look at all the paths from a vertex to the leaves, and we take the maximum length of one of those paths. Okay, so in this case, the height of vertex three would be three, right? Because uh, that's the length of the longest path, which is from vertex three to vertex six. If we start with a leaf itself, its height is just zero, okay? Both of the data structures that we're going to be talking about in the next two weeks are actually going to use binary trees. Okay, so this is a special kind of tree where every vertex has at most two children. Okay, so here you see some examples. So a vertex doesn't have to have two children. You know, it can, if it's a leaf, it's going to have no children. This vertex has one child, but a vertex cannot have more than two children. Okay, and when that's the case, then a tree is called a binary tree.